Good Sunday morning to you. I'm thrilled to be able to spend this time together with you. And just a reminder, even though you are watching our services online, there's still a way to participate. And so we encourage you, log on and comment uh, freely. Uh, we really enjoy that interaction. Um, you would be surprised where God shows up to work and what work he is interested in doing. A lot of times we assume that things have to be set up just right and look, well, quite religious in order for God to be interested. But scripture actually reveals some very different things about the work that God does and where he does it. And so I'd like to talk for a few minutes about that today. And we're going to go to a place in scripture that's known as the Lamentations. Uh, these are the laments of a prophet. And uh, so we're going to be in Lamentations chapter 3 beginning in verse 19. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. So he's saying, I've been through some very difficult things, and it's affecting my emotions. And he said, yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. This is interesting. There's something that he's able to bring to his mind even though it didn't automatically come to his mind. He says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. He's not waiting for something or some outcome. He's waiting for the Lord. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the one who seeks him. Once again, seeking him, not something. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him and let him be filled with disgrace for no one is cast off by the Lord forever. This is a phenomenal passage because what it's telling us, uh, the scripture is saying it is good when a person has to carry weight and pull a load. It is good when you find yourself knocked down. It is good when you find yourself having to face something that might be able to harm you. It is good even when you have to stare down embarrassment. Scripture is not saying that it is fun. Scripture is not saying that it is enjoyable. Scripture is saying that there is an advantage to this. There's something going on that it is good when a person learns that they can stand up and pull things greater than they thought. It is good. Even when we're knocked down, we discover that's not the end of us. It is good when we face something that may be able to harm us. It is good when we're willing to not flee from something that may embarrass us, but to stand in the face of it. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, He's talking about the Lord. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. It sounds like a contradiction. He brings grief, but he doesn't willingly bring grief. What's going on here? It's describing a struggle that a person is going through. It's describing a series of challenges and events. And what God is trying to communicate is that God hasn't caused the struggle, but God is available in the struggle. And there are things that can be learned in the midst of the struggle. So we've been talking about setting apart a space for God to sanctify our, our home, both the place that we worship and the place that we live. We can welcome God's presence and we can give way to his will. These are very powerful things. And that when God begins to use a space for his purpose, that's what makes it sacred. Now, when you look through scripture, you discover pretty early on that relationship is significant to God. It's what keeps us from treating others and opportunities just like a business transaction. That there's more to life than that. Relationship is what helps our prayers to not just be 
incantations where we're trying to say something in a certain way to get what we want, but conversations where we're having a relational uh, connection with God. It's what turns scripture into something that helps guide our life rather than something that gets used to manipulate life. And uh, so relationship is significant. So the question is, what draws us close in relationship? And a lot of times we look for the things that we have in common or that we enjoy that other people also enjoy. What do we have in common? And uh, there actually is something we have in common, but it's not what we usually think about. And that is our struggles. You see, when you are going through a struggle, people actually are able to see beneath the surface of our lives. So when you're going through a struggle, you learn how to be seen and heard. It's the power of vulnerability. It's an incredible asset in our lives. And we all struggle with lots of things. We, we struggle to keep our head above water, common phrase. We struggle to care for those we love. Uh, we struggle to keep our cool when things are not going the way we would prefer. We struggle to avoid life-limiting or life-controlling behaviors. Uh, we struggle to invest in the lives of those that we care about. And by the way, that struggle is sometimes we just would prefer not to do it. There may be something more interesting to do, but sometimes we feel like we have nothing worth investing in someone's life, and that becomes a struggle. We struggle to get ahead. We struggle to manage our responsibilities. We struggle when we feel like we don't have enough. We struggle when we feel like we are not enough. So what are we supposed to do with our struggles? And scripture gives us two compelling things. And the first is bring your struggles to God. And the second is to share your struggles with each other. This is counterintuitive. These are the things we prefer to hide. So when we go through a struggle, it kind of reminds us of what our limitations are. We don't have unlimited power. We don't have unlimited resources. We might have a lot of relationships, but you don't have unlimited influence in those relationships. We can't actually control people. We don't have uh, power over opportunities. We can be prepared for them, but we don't actually create them. So struggles kind of open our eyes and wake us up to where we actually are in the world. And when you're going through a struggle, it's very easy to start with an assumption that God is withholding life from me. And this is how I'd like you to think about this. God is not withholding life from you. He's actually releasing life in that struggle to you. You see, God has come to fulfill your destiny, not your fantasy. God has come to fulfill your destiny, not your fantasy. So, uh, when we're in a struggle, we might pray. And sometimes when we pray, it seems like nothing happens. And that's when we start feeling like something is wrong. Maybe something is wrong with God. Uh, maybe he plays favorites. He answers some people's prayers, not others. Maybe he's inconsistent. He answers prayers sometimes, not other times. Or sometimes we think there's something wrong with us. Like there's other people who have managed their spiritual life better and they can obtain more. And what I want you to see is that that's not what's actually happening in struggles. Struggles have a way of revealing what we need, not just what we want. Um, we all have some ideas of things we want, but what do we need? That's a little bit more challenging to sort out and sift through. So God hasn't come just to put a specific present in your hand or to put you in a specific location on the map. He's actually come and he desires to grow us and develop us unto our potential. So let's take a couple minutes this morning and uh, identify some common struggles that we face. So we face the, the struggle. We all need strength to endure pa painful trials. Right? There are just some things that they're painful to walk through. They're painful to endure. And our instinct in pain is to recoil against it. I just recently burned my, my uh, finger. And as soon as I felt the pain, I pulled my hand back. That's a natural response. The challenge is, is that in lots of life where there is pain, we can decide that all of our decisions will be made on what hurts less. We actually allow lesser pain to determine our future and our destiny. 
And the thing is, is that there are certain muscles, physical muscles, spiritual muscles, emotion, emotional muscles that will not be developed if all we do is avoid any kind of discomfort or pain. So God can work redemptively in our pain. He can work redemptively in the crosses that we find ourselves bearing. Uh, we're not seeking pain, but we're not afraid of it either. There are things that are more important in life than our own personal comfort, or there are things that are bigger in life than my own personal dreams. So in those moments, you can find strength to stand your ground in the face of painful trials. Uh, second common struggle, we need courage to step into uncertain situations. We need courage to step into uncertain situations. See, God knows how everything is going to go. We do not know how everything is going to go because we are not God. Now, the challenge is we often don't know if, if our effort is really going to make a difference. If I really give my best into this situation, will it make a difference? We don't want to waste our life and we don't want to waste our efforts, our strength, our energy, our resources. And, and this can lead us to a point of deception. The deception is if I'm not getting what I want, then I am wasting my time or my effort or my energy. What I can tell you after lots of years in ministry is that people's primary regrets are not the things that they've done they should not have done. Don't get me wrong, they do regret that. But the larger regrets and the more frequent regrets are when we've not given our best to something and then something didn't happen that we hoped. And when we're facing those moments where we're, we're wondering if we should give our best, the fear of something not working out the way we want can paralyze us. It, it, it can be a temporary paralyzation, which is just hesitation, or it can become a, a permanent paralyzation where we just develop a pattern in our life where we never walk those paths, we never do those things. The truth is, is that I can't become braver until I face the things that I'm afraid of. And so there are things that I'm going to be uncertain about, but I need to face them. I actually believe there's a wealth of knowledge that will come to those who choose not to limit their efforts to sure things. See, everyone's willing to give their best to something that they know is going to turn out the way they want. But there's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of knowledge that comes to those who are willing to invest their best when they don't know how it's going to turn out. It's very rare knowledge in our culture, but it's more important now than ever. Third common uh, struggle, we need character to be developed in the face of temptation. We need character to be developed in the face of temptation. Uh, we don't like internal struggles any better than we like external struggles. We, we don't like it when things feel difficult within us. And temptation has a way of shining light on the very things we would prefer to hide. When we have an external struggle, we're not sure of the outcome. When we have an internal struggle, we're not sure of ourselves. So we would prefer to eliminate temptation in life. And by the way, this is often a religious approach. You kind of outlaw or rule out certain access to things in hopes that by them not being around, you'll be stronger. Um, I actually think we have to learn how to resist temptation, to regulate our lives to be able to say no to the things that we're tempted by. Uh, here's the interesting thing. When you say no to something, you still have the option of saying yes to a multitude of things. But once you say yes to something, you may be saying no to another multitude of things. And temptation always wants you to say yes to the wrong things. And it locks all those other options out of your life. So temptation will deliver on pleasure but it's not so good at delivering on your potential. Yielding to temptation is how we actually settle for less in life. Temptation reveals that we think less of ourselves, I'm not good enough to actually get better than this, or we think less of God, I can't trust him enough to give me better than this option right now. I better take what I can while I can. 
fourth common struggle. We need to learn generosity in the face of scarcity. We need to learn generosity in the face of scarcity. No one likes to admit they're stingy. I don't hear very many people doing that. But what we will say is, I need to wait. I, I intend to do something, but I'm going to hold off right now because I need maybe more time or more resource. And here's what I want you to know. More doesn't make us more generous. Um, they've actually done studies. The more you have in terms of percentage, the less generous you will be. Some of the poor people in our culture wind up being the most generous in terms of the percentage of what they're willing to share. See, generosity is limited by our ignorance, not our knowledge. I don't know if I will have enough. I don't know how it will turn out. I don't know how long it will take, so I will withhold. And all the things that we don't know actually start driving our lack of generosity. And scripture calls us to make decisions on generosity on a different basis. Fifth temptation, we need patience when nothing seems to be changing. We need patience when nothing seems to be changing. The decision to quit is usually, usually follows the thought that nothing will ever change. As soon as we accept that as truth, we tap out. And what I would encourage you is that while the outcome hasn't changed yet, there may be changes that are going on, and they may be small and almost imperceptible. Um, there are little nuances, little adjustments, things that are happening that you don't notice all the time. They're not obvious, but God is at work. You see, God tends to work more in journey mode than show mode, step by step along the way. There's a little light that will dawn in our hearts and in our minds and gives us insight that corrects a step or adjusts a path. And uh, that's very different than a flash of light across the sky that changes everything. But this is how God tends to work with us. Seeing a different outcome may require taking a different approach. So maybe God wants you to keep doing what you're doing and just stay faithful in that and eventually that will have the impact and the influence you desire. Maybe God is actually interested in us taking a different approach. But here's the thing. Patience is what faith looks like over time. Patience is what faith looks like over time. And when you are patient, you don't just get the thing that you hope for. You actually possess your soul. It's a very powerful concept. I actually wish I had more time to develop that. So I would encourage you, don't just ask God for what you want. Ask God for what you need today. While you're waiting for what you want, what do you need to sustain you so that you can remain faithful? What do you need to nourish you so that you can eventually flourish? What do you need today? God can actually use our struggles to sanctify our home. So what are we to do? Bring our struggles to God and share our struggles with each other. Maybe you're struggling physically, pain, some kind of physical condition that's limiting your life in ways that makes life difficult for you. Maybe you're struggling financially. There's just not enough income to keep your head above water uh, financially. Maybe there's something internally going on. It, it could be a spiritual concern. It could be a... Uh, an emotional concern. And here's what I want you to know. Don't hide your struggles. Bring them to God. Share them with others. And what you will discover is that there are people who are willing to stand with and pray for you. That you will be able to endure a painful trial. That you will find courage to face the scary things, that you will develop character that can stand up to temptation when it comes, that, that you can become generous even when you don't have all that you need, and you can be patient even when it looks like nothing is changing, because that's the kind of God that we serve. So let's just pray this morning. Father, um, sometimes it feels like our entire life is a struggle, like we are, it's all uphill all the time and we see others and it appears like their life is just so much easier would you help us 
in the midst of our struggle, to bring those struggles to you and to dare to share them with others and watch what you can do in the midst of it. Because we know that your mercies are new every morning and your faithfulness is great. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.